World War II was a cataclysmic, nearly apocalyptic event that brought together an array of nations and peoples united against the common enemy of fascism. Among the combatants, whose contributions and courage are often underrepresented, are African soldiers who played critical roles in the global conflict. Africa is not often covered by the collective memory of the Second World War. I guess you probably know about the North Africa campaigns focusing around generals Montgomery and Rommel, but what about the soldiers from Africa? Today your history fox wants to shed light on their contributions, underscoring the importance of their efforts and courage, because it's also thanks to them that the free world put a halt to the Axis powers. We should remember that these men fought in a war that was not theirs. The scale of African involvement in World War II is frequently underplayed. More than a million Africans served as combatants as well as war workers and carriers in World War II for the colonial powers. More than half enlisted by Britain, with the rest serving France and Belgium. On the civilian front, even more African women and men produced vast quantities of food and strategic materials for the Allied war effort. Estimating the exact number of African soldiers who fought in World War II is challenging due to the lack of comprehensive historical records, but it's generally agreed that their numbers were substantial. These African soldiers in the colonial armies served both in African campaigns and in other theaters of war. This number of a million does not include the countless African civilians who contributed to the war effort as laborers, porters and non-combatants, whose contributions are often overlooked. The British Empire alone recruited upwards of half a million African troops. French forces included around 200,000 men from sub-Saharan Africa, known as the Tirailleurs Sénégalais, although they were drawn from various French colonies, not just Senegal. In North Africa, vast numbers around 300,000 soldiers from Algeria, Tunisia and Morocco served in the French army. The King's African Rifles, a multi-battalion British colonial regiment recruited from British East Africa like Kenya, Uganda, Tanganyika and Nyasaland, Somaliland and British West Africa like Gambia, Sierra Leone and Gold Coast. However, the Axis powers also used their colonies for recruiting. Therefore, Italian East Africa, which is Ethiopia, Eritrea and Somalia, also contributed a significant number of soldiers. In Europe, the colonizers claimed that these young African men voluntarily registered to fight as soldiers. However, that was rarely the case. Many registered against their will or out of the desperate need to pull themselves out of poverty. Britain, for example, set quotas in their colonies. Young men were captured and forced to register. Most of the time they had never heard of the countries they now knew were their enemies. They then traveled to far away territories to fight in armies for the freedom of their own oppressors. In the end, at least over a hundred thousand of these soldiers lost their young lives in the white man's war. Even more if you count the Italian invasion in Ethiopia during which chemical weapons were used and up to 600,000 people lost their lives. The roles African soldiers played were varied and significant. They served as foot soldiers, garrison troops, scouts, carriers and more. In terms of combat roles, African soldiers were often employed as riflemen, artillerymen and in some cases armored car and tank crews. In East Africa, the King's African rifles played a crucial role in combating Italian forces. The valor and tenacity of African soldiers were noteworthy in campaigns like the Battle of Car in Eritrea and the Battle of Gonda in Ethiopia. African soldiers from French colonies fought heroically in battles in France, Italy and North Africa. These brave men played a pivotal role in the liberation of France, the Battle of Birhagheim, where free French and African soldiers held off a much larger Italian-German force is a testament of their fortitude. However, the roles of African soldiers were frequently constrained by the discriminatory policies and attitudes of the time. They were often used as frontline troops, while the command positions were generally reserved for white officers. In terms of higher ranks, there were just a few who ascended to these positions. One example is Major Seth Anthony, who was the first black African to be commissioned into the British Army. Anthony was from the Gold Coast, which is now Ghana. He served in Burma, which is now Myanmar, with the 81st West African Division. This division, together with the 82nd West African Division, is the so-called Forgotten Army who fought brutal battles but were uncelebrated after the war. I also need to mention Adiba, a member of the French resistance and a Guinea-born tirailleur Senegalais. 
known as the Black Terrorist, who was arrested on the 18th November of 1943 by Germans. Barr was tortured but did not speak and he was subsequently shot. Unfortunately, so many stories and names are lost. Probably the white victors did not want to share their spotlight. But their contribution was so crucial. And of course, it wasn't just a few names that were important in the war, but all those men. I want to give you three examples. At the Battle of Keren in Eritrea, African and especially Sudanese troops showed immense courage and strategic excellence. The battle had a significant impact on the broader East African campaign, paving the way for the eventual elimination of the Italian presence in East Africa. In the Battle of Bir Harkheim, African soldiers held their position against the larger Axis forces of the Panzer Army Africa, commanded by General Oberst Erwin Rommel for 15 days. A crucial delay for the Allied forces, because the delay imposed on the Axis offensive influenced the cancellation of Operation Hercules, the Axis invasion of Malta. Another crucial campaign was the one in Burma. African soldiers, particularly those from the King's African Rifles, played a critical role in the Burma campaign against Japanese forces. I already mentioned the forgotten African troops that fought in those battles. They had the advantage of being used to the climate. They were really resilient. With the words of Field Marshal William Slim, all the African soldiers needed was a handful of rice and some bush to crawl under to sleep. Even though the African soldiers could cope better with the tropical weather, their losses were immense. The whaler of African soldiers often came with great sacrifice. Hundreds of thousands lost their lives. Yet their stories and contributions have been largely forgotten or marginalized. This is evident in the absence of African soldiers in the victory parade in Paris in 1945, despite their crucial role in the liberation of France. Their absence symbolizes the dismissal of African soldiers from the collective memory of World War II. Now you might be asking, why is the African perspective missing in the narrative about the Second World War? What's this historical amnesia about? Is it racism? Yes, probably. But it's also related to British, French and Belgian hypocrisy. First, they were expendable, then forgettable. The African perspective on the conflict complicates efforts to recall the Second World War as a straightforward victory over tyranny, aggression and racist intolerance. While the Atlantic Charter's affirmation that all people had a right to self-determination was a powerful rebuke of the Axis powers fascism and hypernationalism. The uncomfortable fact for the Allies was that, with the exception of Liberia and Ethiopia, every sub-Saharan African who contributed to their war effort was actually the subject of a European imperial power. As such, they had no right to self-determination. A great many of the African women and men who participated in the war did so at the behest, if not outright compulsion, of a foreign authoritarian regime. At best, Britain, France and Belgium could make the case for the Allied cause by arguing with considerable validity that they were better imperial masters than the Germans, Japanese and Italians, and I guess that probably made them feel better. It should not be forgotten that the European powers made African soldiers fight even against each other, using them like chess pieces just because they were wearing the uniforms of the rival imperial powers. This was the case when the Allies drove the Italians out of Ethiopia in 1941, and one year later when they seized the island of Madagascar from the Vichy French regime. Even more problematically, the varying Vichy and free French factions unapologetically used units of the West African Tirailleur Senegalais against each other during their struggle for Syria. Many of these soldiers fought for hope, the hope for their own freedom and sovereignty. They expected that the ideals of the Atlantic Charter would apply to Africa once the Axis threat was vanquished. But they were all disappointed. Quite the contrary happened. The European colonial powers expected their African colonies to make substantial contributions to post-war European reconstruction. Unlike their white comrades, African servicemen received no mass recognition, no reward for their service upon their repatriation. They did not receive their war gratuity payments on their return to Africa or were paid three times less war pension as their white comrades, as was the case for the British veterans. It is said that the myth about white superiority fell victim to the brutality the African soldiers saw in the war. Seeing a white soldier bleeding, screaming and dying made 
made them realize that they were no different, because we all bleed red. In the end, the participation of African soldiers in the Second World War accelerated decolonization. The homecoming soldiers brought stories about self-determination and the right of sovereignty. And even though Britain and France were not thinking at all about letting go of their valuable African possessions, they were weakened after the war. They really tried hard to stop their African colonies from becoming independent, as we saw in the Malagasy uprising, the Mau Mau rebellion or the Algerian war. In 1944, Senegalese soldiers protested against unequal pay and pensions, leading to the Tiaroué massacre, where French forces killed numerous African veterans. However, they couldn't stop the African countries from becoming independent. Many veterans subsequently became key figures in the independence movements, like Leopold Seda Sengo in Senegal or Houari Boumedienne in Algeria. The African soldiers of World War II displayed unyielding courage and resilience in the face of war. Africa not just provided soldiers, but resources and a location from which to plan a free France. The story of Africa's soldiers in the Second World War is a compelling narrative of bravery, sacrifice and the pursuit of equality. It challenges our collective memory and understanding of the war. Recognizing their contributions is not just a matter of historical accuracy. It is a tribute to the spirit of courage and resilience that these forgotten heroes embodied. As we remember World War II, let us ensure that these soldiers find their rightful place in the annals of history. Because at the end, death knows no color. Thank you for watching. If you want to discover more interesting but forgotten pieces of history, please click here.